Last week on Last Comic Standing, Ralphie May blew the roof off the Paris Hotel. Dat Fan performed like a samurai. Tess lit up the stage. Rich Voss fired jokes like a machine gun. And Corey Kahaney was flawless. Tonight, with an exclusive talent contract with NBC and a Comedy Central special at stake, America has voted, and we will crown the last comic standing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Welcome to Last Comic Standing. Last week, our five finalists came in here and they rocked the house. And tonight, based on your votes, we will whittle them down one by one until there is only one left. And by the way, the one who wins, we just found this out, will be flown to Los Angeles tomorrow and will appear on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. <laughs> we know how to do it. The prizes keep on coming. Gosh, I'm having fun here in Las Vegas. I'm up so much money, it's ridiculous. I just keep playing the ATM. <laughs> I can't lose. I use the same four numbers every time, too. <laughs> you think that's funny, though, but next time you go to the ATM in the casino and you get your money out, just stand there and hold it up and go, Woo! <laughs> Old ladies will kick you out of the way. This machine's cold now. Oh, is it, Grandma? I won again. <laughs> you ever go to the ATM? You know what really bothers me? It always says, when you put your card in, the first thing it says on the screen, it'll say, what language shall we speak? Oh, I don't know. I'm in a casino in Las Vegas in America. How about we speak the language printed on the money? Latin. <laughs> but there's no Latin button. They got every language listed. You ever see it on the side? Press here for English, Spanish, French, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, that squiggly King of Siam stuff down in the corner. You don't know what it is. Then there's a button off to the side that says other. <laughs> you just listed 11 languages. What do you mean other? Who's coming by? Coco beware running out of the rainforest with a parrot on his shoulder, <laughs> holding a rock. other. Ever go to the drive through ATM? That's the best. That's convenient, right? Do me a favor. Next time you go to the drive through ATM, I want you to notice something. They have braille buttons. <laughs> braille button at a drive through ATM. What does that say, I wonder? I hope it says, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> How does a blind guy go to the drive through ATMs? He just roll up in his new Lincoln. <laughs> All right, everyone fan out and feel around. We're either at the bank or the radio shack. I don't know which way I came up off the curb. <laughs> feel around, fan out. If you feel, if you feel batteries, we got to go back. <laughs> Since we started the show, Last Comic Standing, my life's changed also. Uh, my wife and I had a baby boy. I'm now a father. And I'm, oh, no. You're very nice. No, no. If, if you knew how long we tried, I should be booed. <laughs> I buy diapers now. I never went to the supermarket for diapers. Do you ever buy diapers? There's an entire diaper aisle. And diapers is a different buy than other things. You've got to get the right diaper. You can bring home the wrong can of soup. You can bring home the wrong tomato. But if you bring home the wrong kind of diapers, you're going back. <laughs> and if they're closed, you're breaking in. Because if not, when you wake up, there's going to be <laughs> all over your house. <laughs> you know when it says what's in each aisle, there's like six things listed? No, just diapers. Wall-to-wall -wall diapers. And they got diapers. All Huggies 1 through 45 diapers. They got Huggies with pull-ups, huggies with stirrups, huggies with wings. 
<laughs> then you say, they got adult diapers, and you actually stand there and you look at them and you think, it's not a bad idea. Sometimes you don't buy the diaper just because the kid on the package is ugly. You're like, no, nah, no. Nah. His eyes are too close together. My kid's not wearing those diapers. Well, let's get started. All right, let's meet the finalists, ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, Ralphie May. From San Diego, California, Dat Fan. Sandusky, Ohio's Tess. From Plainfield, New Jersey, Rich Voss. And New York, New York's Corey Kahaney. Come on, let's give all five more finalists a big round of applause. All right, stick around, we'll be right back. to last comic standing from the Paris Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. I am here with our five finalists. Of course, it's fair to say that all of your lives have changed already. The process of getting here started months ago when we sent Tonight Show talent scouts Ross Mark and Bob Reed to find the funniest new comics in America. Now, everyone, this is great. Take a look at how we first met you. Anybody can win this contest. What we're looking for in Last Comic Standing is a larger-than-life uh, personality, but also with the material and the jokes to back it up. I got involved with comedy because I liked making people laugh, and then eventually I took an open mic at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. My name is Dat Fan. I'm from San Diego, California. How are you guys doing? I'm very, very nervous because uh, I've never been in NBC Studios before, and, you know, I'm about to go on the Carson stage, and in front of two major execs, and I'm trying to be funny in front of them. Vietnamese people and beauty salons, how did that come together? I'm kind of curious about that. What was the plan of attack there? It's like, okay, Vietnam, listen up. This is our, our plan of attack right here. That's how we take over. Japanese people, they make, they make the VCR. Vietnamese people, we take over by doing pedicure. That's how we take over. We take over one foot at a time. That's the plan of attack right there. We do it from the toe up. That's the plan right there. I think Dot should move on to the semifinals with us in Los Angeles. Yes! Thank you very much, you guys. He's never been on Thank TV. You. He's never had, he has no credits. And I don't know how long he's been comedy for, but he was somebody that just won us over. He, was, he had great energy and he had great jokes. Good energy. You're a real nice material. find, Dot. We like you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Bob. How'd you know I was Bob? Because I answer phones at the Hollywood Improv and I talk to you every day. Oh my God, that's, I didn't know that was you. That's me. <laughs> no, we had known this guy for how many years, you know? And we talked to him every day and we had no idea it was the same guy. I made it. I made the semifinals. I'm very excited. Oh my god. There's never been a stand-up comedy show in prime time. Okay, there's been variety shows, but none of them have given comedians who all they had to do was show up and do three minutes and be the best three minutes. Hi, my name is Ralphie May. I live in a place called Da Hood, D-A Hood, Da Hood. Population, all them bitches, can I get a what, what, holla? You're probably just a little prejudiced watching Ralphie come in and just like, oh, he's gonna do these jokes about being overweight and blah, 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 and he doesn't. He sneaks up on you and he really has original material. I actually live with Mexicans. I like Mexican people. The cool thing about hanging out with Mexicans is if you ever forget a Mexican dude's name, you can always just read their necklace and that's just convenient. It's like, what's your name? Nomar, what kind of messed up name is Nomar? Ramon, come on stars, man! Ralphie, thank you. Great job. Thank you, guys. And Bob and I would love to see you in the semifinals um, in a couple weeks. Great, thank you, fellas. My name is Tess Drake. I'm a hottie. 
Come on now, look at me. This take time to look this good. I dated all men too, so I can tell you something about all of them, okay? White, black, Asian, Mexican, all of them. You know, no more Mexicans though. They work me too hard. Woohoo, yeah. Always trying to get me pregnant too. I ain't having no babies. Mess up this figure, uh-uh. Tess had me from the beginning. I can quote her material. I know who she is as a character. And, you know, she's just infectious. She, you just love this woman, and you can't help but laugh. We think you're a total hottie, and we want to bring you to our semifinals. Thank you. Okay. In New York, it was Corey Kahaney and Rich Voss. When Corey Kahaney walked out on stage, she surprised me. I have a teenage daughter, which is uh, a lot of fun if you like being stabbed in the back. And when she opened her mouth and she started reciting the jokes about being a mom. You know, they tell you that the best way to be a parent of teenagers is to know where they are and who they're with. Her material was about her teenage daughter and battling, you know, what teenage moms and daughters do. I thought, that's a sitcom star. My daughter comes home every night with her friends. They go in her room, they close the door, and then they light incense. Yeah, like, I don't know what's going on in there. Like, I think there's a Zen Buddhist meeting in my apartment. Corey, congratulations. We want to bring you on to the next level. Thanks so much. Bye. Start the car. Canada sucks. Canada said if we attack Iraq, they're not going to back us. Oh. Why don't we get Nebraska to attack Canada? <laughs> this isn't a bad crowd, all two of you. If you're performing to two people and you get one to smile, that means you're killing. I owe my 10-year-old $6 for Girl Scout cookies, and I'm dodging her. <laughs> Rich, we're going to cut it off there. I've seen enough. Okay. The only people that you haven't insulted are the African-American community no, and the gay community. Time, I will. Congratulations. We want to bring you on to the semifinals. Well, thank you, guys. You guys were great. I'll be selling CDs in the hallway. They're $10. Rich Voss freaked me out. I don't, I, it's just like, that's one person. Rich, I'm sorry, but Ross chose you to move on. I didn't choose you. Maybe uh, this is the end of my career. <laughs> Rich Ross, what what's it like to perform for two people? I told you, I sold one CD. <laughs> <laughs> Based on your auditions, did you think you would make it this far? I was actually auditioning for The Tonight Show. I didn't really know. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to be here, don't get me wrong, but well, at the not... time I was trying to impress Bob and Ross. I really was. I wasn't really trying to get on this. Am I the only one that's noticed that Bob and Ross are starting to look alarmingly like each other? Yeah. <laughs> Married couples do that. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Boss. tonight's show. <laughs> Boss, you've been doing comedy for 20 years. I mean, you're a veteran. What, what did this opportunity represent to you? Well, I guess the best thing I got out of this was I met my fiancé, Dave. Uh, <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully I'll get a, a contract with, like, an iron or an iron board company. Something good might come out of in order to find your housemates, we looked at over a thousand comedians. Some were good, some were not good. <laughs> Let's take a look at the best of the worst that we had to sit through. <laughs> In their search, Ross Mark and Bob Reed also came across some of the most interesting new comics in America. We saw impressions. Do, do, do you want to see my impressions? Where's well, your messiah now, Lion? Yeah, yeah. This is Bill Cosby as Gandalf the Wizard. You shall not pass unless you give us some of the jello pudding. Nah. They'll never recognize me with my mask on. Talk about yourself. Talk about what's funny to you. Seriously. It wasn't a very good Travolta. No. No. Well, Andy, Andy, Andy. We're going to cut you off right there. No more impressions. Let me show you my impression of my favorite comic. Chris Farley. <laughs> Chris Farley. My name is Matt Boy, and I am a motivational speaker. My name's Mr. Giggle. Well, you've seen this face before. I was in a How Did You Do Look Like contest. A lot of people have been telling me I look like Renee Zellweger. Norm from Cheers. Who told you that was funny? <laughs> Email the Marcos. Uh, do, 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 do you guys like jokes? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to bring 12 of the greatest people in the world to sing for you. 
there. Okey doke, I'm going down. Do they have taxi reruns here in Chicago or something? <laughs> Snow suggests. I'm not Susan Sarandon. I'm like a Chihuahua version of her. Why don't I have her career? We saw every variation of the American melting pot. So you're probably wondering, what race is that guy anyway? I'm an Italian from Italy. I'm originally from the Middle East. I'm a Quaker. I'm Irish. Oh, I'm Jewish. I know that it comes as a shock. Uh, I'm a Puerto Rican and Italian girl. My mother is Italian. My dad's from India. My father Irish. And my mom is from Japan. I'm like a quarter Irish. I'm half Russian. I'm half crustacean. For some, the hardest part of comedy was just taking the microphone okay. off the stand. Hey, Greg, I'm from no, no, Greg, 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 that's not the mic. Whoa. If you're a comedian, you have to have command of the microphone. How do I, how do I do this? How do you do this? For some, the hardest part of stand-up was standing up. We met freaks. Freak day in the Big Apple. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I'm the banana. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm in therapy. Why aren't you laughing? There's no jokes. Bet you're wondering why I'm the banana. Uh-huh. Thanks, Danny. No, he's going to tell us why he's in the banana suit. Why did you cut him off? Actually, you guys get me all nervous. Now I forgot what the hell I was going to say about being a banana. I'm sorry. He's no, an no, idiot. No, actually, it's sex appeal, so don't worry about it. It works out pretty well. Why are you in the banana before we do, we'll let you go? I love being a banana. I mean, where, where do you see bananas? You know, I mean, you come here, you stand in line, and there's a banana. I'll tell you what, the guy you got to look out for is that clown outside there. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, you're definitely crazy. All right, I think we're ready for the next Yucko the Clown. So state your name and uh, where you're from, and we'll see your best two minutes. I'm Yucko the Clown from Coney Island. What? What the hell are you looking at? Yeah, this is a good idea. It's a reality show. You think this up all by yourself? I'll be here all frickin' week, folks. I'm funnier than that. These are the jokes. <laughs> Where were the jokes? Nope. Oh, God. Okay, this job sucks. I got picked to be on Fear Factor, by the way, and they told me two weeks before I was supposed to go on the show that I couldn't be on. You know why? They did a background check. They did a background check, right. and I lied. Yeah. Yeah, I got in trouble once. I, tr I tried to work as a call girl once, and I got arrested on my first, my first gig. I'm... Basically, in a hiatus, I'm working with some security systems and stuff, creating some kind of content media. I currently cater to the restaurant industry. Um, Greg? Yes. I don't want to be rude, but it sounded more like a job interview. So you're, you're looking for an actual stand-up routine. Don't pick me because I'm beautiful. Click. Two minutes, people. What am I supposed to do in two minutes? I got no time. I got to get out of here. Anybody with me? Here we go. That's it. It's late. Let's go home. <laughs> Can we put that on TV? Thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> All right. There you go. All, all, all of a sudden, these five look a lot funnier. When we come back, we'll reunite all 10 of the housemates, and later on, we'll start to narrow down the finalists because there can only be one last comic standing. Don't go away. Welcome back to Last Comic Standing. I am here with our five finalists, but of course we did not just start with these five. The house was originally filled with 10 very funny and talented individuals. So let's bring out the other five now. Please welcome in the order they departed, Sean Kent, Terry Joyce, Rob Cantrell, and Dave Mordow, and Jeff Brown.
Yeah, she's right over here for you. Come on, everybody. What's up, homie? How you doing, Francis? What's up, girl? Hey, man. Grab some pie there. How are you doing? Grab some pie. You too. All right. This is a nice, exciting twist, huh? All right. So how, how have your guys' lives changed since the show? Sean, I'll ask you first. Uh, my life's been, like, crazy since the show, uh, just because right after the show, I got sick again. So I've been going through treatment. So that's why I'm sans the hat tonight. I wanted to show solidarity with other people out there going through that. So. Nice. Not hiding the ball. Oh, don't hide it, buddy. But it's been great. I got recognized at the Dodger game, so. Oh. Right on. Well, there's nothing to look at on the field. I might as well recognize you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of looking around. In this. Right. Dave Mordow, what's up with you? How's your life changed? <laughs> I have cousins that want to sleep with me again. <laughs> <laughs> That's no small feat. You say again like there was a lag in between. <laughs> You lose your game at the family reunion, or what? <laughs> you get there late, you know what happens. <laughs> Rob Cantrell. Yes, sir. You've been doing, oh, we love Rob. Uh, you've been doing comedy a relatively short amount of time. What, three, four years? About three or four uh, years. We yeah. met you, you were a kindergarten teacher, right? And then Assistant you, to the kindergarten teacher. Assistant kindergarten <laughs> teacher. Wow. Well, all right. Well, then who's easier to communicate with, four-year-olds or Rich and uh, Sean? Four-year-olds, by five. <laughs> Always. Terry, you got, you got a new hairstyle. I do. You know, actually, um, I had a fling with one of the blue men last night, so. <laughs> <laughs> what he did. How do you know it was just one? They look exactly alike. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, I guess part of him's not blue anymore. <laughs> All right, if you've never been together with a group of comics, you'd be surprised how quickly the tension can take over. Here's a little look at the first couple of days in the house. Can you show me the decency of smoking outside? That's, that's all my we're not asking, smoking that's all. is not going to F up your lungs. Please. All right, so every time I walk in the room, I don't want somebody drinking a beer because I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know what? Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. I don't want to smoke. Yeah, but it's that. not about me not nonsense. smoking cigarettes anymore. It's yeah. about me not being able to breathe. You're sitting here down in alcohol so much. You're so worried about your health. Why are you drinking so much? I'm not all right. Good Kiss my ass. What's that? I like to have adult conversations because I'm an adult. Stupid, Sean. Okay, let's get to the bottom of this already. He's stupid. There you go. <laughs> 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 I think I hit him in the Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. I dislike you immensely. Good. Okay? I tried to like you playing tennis, but even then I couldn't like you. Good. You, you, Good. Then you don't know. talk to me. Wow. <laughs> Drama, y'all. <laughs> I, I want to know something. It was immediately, first, the first thing in the house, it was everyone against you yeah. with the smoking. And then it shifted pretty much, everyone kind of went towards Sean. Sean, how did the tension build so quick between you and Rich? I don't know. I don't, you know, it's we, funny. We like each other, so it's not like, I don't, I don't know. By the end of the week, we were actually like <clears throat> friends. So, I mean, I think I hit him with a tennis ball, you know, so. You had a great line in the show. He said, I hope I hit him in a smoking arm. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what? That was like when we first arrived at the house, like we were all exhausted because you guys got us up at like five in the morning to fly out after partying all night here because we made it to the house. So we were all like up late. Yeah. And so Rich is like wanting to smoke and I've got, you know, an upper respiratory infection. So I was kind of probably being a little bit of a baby about it, you know, and uh, we just, you know. Here's said, but but you your friends now, it, Rich? You oh, guys yeah, are, listen. You know what? That's in the house. Just in, in real life, I have no problem. I'll hang out with him all day long. What are you kidding me? It was actually like really sweet because I went to the dressing room and he was smoking a cigarette and he put it out really quick in the cup of water he was drinking. Like, you know, like. And then he drank the water. Well, but you know, here's the thing. No, besides, you know, boss is an animal. He'll do it all. Listen, the first of all, and I'm not saying any names. There were other smokers in the house that kind of bailed on me and left me hanging. Would that know? be your fiance? Like, you know, all of a sudden, uh, let, let him deal with it, you know, as they're sitting in the back like this. Uh, but let the world know that I'm going to quit uh, soon. <laughs> it came time to vote on the first eviction. And Sean, you came up short the first week. But you weren't the only comic 
to be put in the hot seat by a stinging majority. Here's a look at some of the voting throughout the show. In a moment, you will all enter the voting booth and announce which comic you know you are funnier than. I know I'm funnier than Sean. I know I'm funnier than Sean. I'm having a real hard time deciding um, if someone is a punk-ass bitch or a bitch-ass punk. So, I know I'm funnier than Sean. Believe it. All right. It's like a big junior high, you know? We've all got the maturity level of, like, junior high, so. Oh, comics. And then there were nine. I know I'm funnier than Terry. 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 You got? I had a dream last night about this big, spiky monster. I know I'm funnier. Than Terry. 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 Not only does like one person vote for me, but five. Five. They're voting out the person that they think is the weakest. So, um, so, you know, I mean, everybody has a right to, you know, who they're gonna vote for. Now there are eight of you, but not for long. I know I'm funnier than Rob. Rob. And Rob. I know I'm funnier than Rob. Oh, man. <laughs> Everybody's selling me out. I was a little surprised, but I was kind of happy in a weird way. There are seven of you, but shortly, it'll be down to six. I know I'm funnier than Dad. Dad fan. Dad. Dad fan. Dad. Dad. Man, this sucks. Oh, man. Dog pile. Everyone in this house wants to get me. I don't know what it is that I did. This is the last head-to-head -head challenge. This will narrow this group down to five. I know I'm funnier than Jeff. Jeff. Ow, Jeff. You killed it, you don't. And I'm really, really going to do my very best. Um, and hopefully the crowd will choose me. So I guess the first question, Ralphie, which is it? <coughs> Bitch-ass punk or punk-ass bitch? At the time, probably uh, bitch-ass punk. But now it's all, everyone's like in love now. It's a love affair, it's fantastic. Hey man, that, look, that was a very stressful time, okay? I, I am too fat to be walking around with clothes on all the time and... Sometimes I just get bored, you know, but I mean your cameras all the time and, and there is no good angle for me to look less fat Hey Cantrell, I was surprised when everyone sold you out. That, that was definitely a dog pile on you and that voted for Cantrell You guys shared bunk beds and you voted against your roommate. It was Which a strategy, was, Jay. Were you just tired? Of, you lived under a desk, no. you didn't want the bottom bunk? <laughs> I, no, I love Rob. I, I, think he's, I think you're a great guy. Seriously, I just, I just thought, I told Rob, I was like, hey, you vote for me, I vote for you. We'll cancel each other out so we can find out what's going on. And then Rob voted for Terry and then everything fell apart, so. Yeah. So Rob, you dropped the ball in the strategy with you and Dad. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry, man. No. <laughs> I, <didn't forget> <laughs> I think you're a great roommate. Yeah, I know? just didn't think it through. Yeah, yeah, you're a nice guy, too. Yeah, I didn't think it through. <laughs> I didn't think it through. Hey, you vote for me, I'll vote for you. Okay, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Rob that, Cantrell, that, that, all natural, first. for steroids. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, Jeff, you had some tension with Ralphie because he didn't think you put yourself on the line enough. How, how do you respond to that in the house? Did, were, you, were you not putting yourself on the line, did you feel? Uh, I made it real simple. Look, I'm not here to align myself with anybody. I'm not a good follower. I'm a man, and I'm a man first. And if I don't like you, I vote for your ass. That's how I did it. I'm going to vote for who either pisses me off or who I think was a heavy cat. I voted for Ralphie. I voted for Corey. Now, until I got voted off, if everybody wanted me on the show, how come nobody ever voted for me? Well, I feel a lot of tension right now. <laughs> I would back you on that, Jeff. I mean, you guys are like pretty top-notch comics. You guys are experienced, right? And then you guys, it's like, it's like being Navy SEALs. 
If, a Navy, if you said that you're special forces, you should go on against other special forces. What? You're not going to go after the streets <laughs> and saved by the bell. You're not going to go, you're not gonna go after the... So in other you, words, we should have never challenged you. No, that's, yeah, what, that's what I'm saying. It's like you guys always seem to go after the lowest one in the totem pole. No, that, you know, that, that's a real interesting point because if you were to contest with regular people that weren't comics, yeah. you in the audience and you at home would know you'd go after the strongest person first. That was yeah. a threat to your prize. But for some reason, comics, almost out of respect to the craft, you guys went after the people you thought didn't belong first. Well, no, but here's the thing. We came... You, and as a producer, I got to thank you because you ensure <laughs> that the headliner goes on last. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Any, any football team, any, any politician has a strategy. When we walked into that house, some of us said, we want to make the final five. Okay? No matter what it takes. We paid our dues and we did what we had to do. All right? We did? So, uh, well, uh, it, How long is this... <laughs> All right, one last time around the horn. Who do you know you're funnier than? I would go with you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's nice of you, Rich, considering I made you. <laughs> well, the time is getting closer and closer to eliminating comics and giving out a career in Hollywood. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. Welcome back to Last Comic Standing. We have all 10 of the housemates with us, and we're taking a little walk down memory lane. I want to talk about alliances for a moment. Comedy isn't a team sport, but uh, some of you tried. So let's take a look at the coalition. <laughs> alliances. No alliances. You guys fabricated it for good TV. The coalition is Ralphie, Mordell, myself. We have dubbed Rich. The Don. Is there a way for us to do what we have to do tomorrow in a delicate and non-cruel manner? No. There was rumor going around the house that maybe a couple people were going to be voting against Sean. I don't know about this rumor, even though I started it and made it happen. Then go against the DAT. No, I, I have to do what he says. Who the underboss decides goes, goes. <laughs> this was Dad's week, but Dad won the exemption, so it kind of messed everything up. I don't know what to do. I have no clue what to do. Well, all the manipulation we try around here doesn't work. Nothing <laughs> works. Nothing, nothing works. <laughs> you guys. I want to say something about the coalition. You guys are possibly the world's most miserable plotters ever. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think about letting someone else lead? <laughs> you guys called Voss the Don. How did you become the Don? I didn't, how do I know? I, I didn't need that pressure. I had an iron. I had a lot going on in the house. <laughs> uh, You're Jewish. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Mordell, did the coalition work? For some people. <laughs> Three of the coalition is in the final five, so I guess it did work out somehow. But I got it specifically, this is for Rich Voss, because you are the Don of the house. In the history of Mafia, of all the Dons who ever lived, I don't think any of them ever used as their motto this. I stink. You stink. I stink. I stink. You know you stink? I stink. You stink. I stunk. You stink. <laughs> yeah, and Tony Soprano's on Paxil. You're sitting here, free, you know, freewheeling it. Well, you know, it took a lot of hard work. Yeah. All comics <laughs> prepare differently. We know you iron. Some keep their jokes in their heads. Uh, some write them down so they can remember them. And then there's Dat. <laughs> <laughs> Dat is to comedy what John Nash from A Beautiful Mind 
is to comedy. Let's take a look. Out of 1,079 shows, I've probably done about... You know how many shows you've done? I have a journal with every single show written. Wow. Yeah, I document everything. For example, here's five of my comedy minutes right here. It goes from 10 to 15 minutes long. He's got charts and graphs on every show he's ever done. It's, it's disturbing. 3.63636 laughs per minute, laughs per minute ratio. These are how long the bits are. Each square on the graph here represents one He's second. out of his mind. IBM doesn't have charts like this. I have like your names, everything is in the journal. Like take, I take it very seriously. Take me out of your journal. <laughs> <laughs> that... <laughs> they love the journal, that. That, I've, I've, I myself have been doing stand-up comedy for 18 years. I don't have a book. Uh, exactly how, how does it help you? Um, it, basically, the journal is a combination between my scientific approach and also the, the theoretical... <laughs> And, and my and my and also on the, on the spiritual side of comedy too because you're gonna have to have a soul to, to be funny you know what I mean so like no I, get I, rich I <laughs> everybody's just firing at each other so um, that's just my approach everybody has their own way and even you told me you know there's no one way to greatness and greatness and, is the way you know does it work I mean I'm here part of the final five so I hope that's, that's are the, the aliens <laughs> Hey Dad, hey Dad, no matter how much we break your chops, don't forget you're still here in the final five, brother. All right? Hey Tess, how organized are you? How do you memorize your act? <laughs> I, 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 no, I don't, I don't memorize it. I was gonna try and lie, but I can't. No, I don't. I just kind of flow with what people like. If they laugh, okay, that's cool, let's work on that, so. Do you write it down ever, like in a notebook, on a napkin? Uh -huh. Yeah, kind of, but I usually lose it, so it doesn't really matter. So, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just kind of go. Yeah, they love oh, Tess, boy. <laughs> this is a question. All right, Corey, I'll ask you a question. Seeing how far that has made it, do you think there's something to the book with the charts and the graphs? Uh, you know, sometimes there's a fluke, you know. I <laughs> <laughs> Look, everybody has a way that they prepare, and this works for him. I, I don't knock that. I don't knock anybody's preparation. Well, I guess I could. I mean, but, I mean, the guy, you know, that, that's his route. I don't do it that way. Jay, I don't, I don't even have notes. I just cheat off of Dad's book. When <laughs> 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 we come back, we're a little closer to finding out who's going to be the last comic standing, so please stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to Last Comic Standing from the Paris Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. I am here with our 10 original housemates. I'm sure we all want to know this. I'd love to know it. What's the funniest thing that happened in the house that never made it onto television? <laughs> Terry? It was the rat, and Rich Voss had a profile on the rat, and it was the most hysterical, hysterical. thing. <laughs> that I, I was hysterical, and it didn't make it. it I didn't mean, make a little tiny bit of it made it, but it... it it was so funny. It was brilliant. Let <laughs> me tell you something. After, after the rat, after the rat ran by, Ralphie did a, you gotta show him what you, okay. what do it. Rat, you gotta do the it. Rat, okay. the rat, the rat right. Right. Here it is. Let's set it up. Hold on. What are we doing here? Okay. This is what happened when, uh, the rat. the rat, okay. I don't like rats. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm surprised I'm friends with Voss, but, uh, <laughs> no, come on. The teeth. Come on, people. Come on. All right. uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you. Alright, this is what happened when I saw the rat. It was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was hilarious. <laughs> now we know how to get Ralphie to exercise. <laughs> That. <laughs> That's the most cardio he's done all year. <laughs> Every time there was an argument in the house and Ralphie didn't like it, 
he would take his clothes off. <laughs> True. We would all Woo! shut up. Naked. Naked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that was everything. Ralphie wasn't Nobody should have to see naked. that. Dave got naked for us too one night, remember? That's right. For us, he for did. For us. That's right. That was special. The Dave Mordell, you got naked for the ladies? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dave? Yeah, I, I, I missed this. You were, you were out. out. Oh, I don't know where you were, but I was very naked. What, what led to that? What caused you to get naked? You're, uh, you were in the Marine Corps. You're not supposed to be dancing around naked. When you're with women, you do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a moment and talk about relationships. Comics can be very funny, and comics can be evil, as we all know, and sometimes it's hard to tell where to draw the line. And here's an example. <laughs> the joke was we were going to play hide and go seek and get dad to go hide, but nobody was going to go look for him. We said go, and dad was just a streak. Uh, I don't know how fast he thinks Ralphie is, but he was just a streak. Oh, I think we're around 19 minutes now. Dad's been uh, <laughs> successfully hiding from Ralphie. I'm trying to pretend that there's an axe murder in the house. What the hell's wrong with you guys? <laughs> what did you guys do? What did, what happened? Nothing. <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never playing this with you, you guys again. <laughs> this, this is so stupid. <laughs> What idea was it to play hide and seek? Dave. Dave. Dave or Dave. <laughs> I thought it would be Wait funny. Wait a minute. I mean, what's really pathetic is I actually really wanted to play hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's true. Oh, loser. She was kind of angry that we weren't really playing. And I go, no, we're not looking for dad. When he, when he... Oh, okay, now it's fine. Okay, here's how they got me. Okay, they go, hey, Ralph, you want to play hide and go seek? And you're going to be it. I go, no, I'm not. No, that means going up all them stairs. No. They said, no, you, all you have to do is count to seven. Perfect. <laughs> okay. I got a question for you, Dad. When you came downstairs and realized it was all a gag, the first words out of your mouth was, I'm never playing hide and seek with you guys again. Is this a game you play at home with your family? No, or this is the thing. You and your buddies get together in San Diego? No, you see, I believe them because, like, I figure, okay, Ralphie's a big guy. I love Ralphie, but you're a big guy, so it probably would take you a while to get to the other side of the house, yeah. right? That's what, no, I love you, man. No, listen, no, no, I'm all the way at the other side in the theater, and you know that's way up, like, on the fourth floor yeah. or whatever. So I'm like, I'm winning. I'm winning the prize. Yeah. Now, <laughs> The show didn't, nobody knows though, we felt so bad the next day we went out and bought him a really nice shirt. We went out That is him. true. We went that out is, yeah, that's him. True. I, I agree. Uh, Look yeah. at the Don with a heart of gold. Uh, well, you know what? No, they did. Yeah. Why don't you re reword that? Yeah, why don't you tell us exactly how that worked? Let me reword it. It was my idea to buy him a shirt and Corey paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> it was your idea. And I'm sure she did. also picked the shirt. <laughs> I want to take a look at one more thing. Sometimes on these shows, two people meet and a spark is ignited that can't be put out. <laughs> <laughs> and then, sadly, someone has to depart. Let's take one last look at our very own last comic standing romance. It feels almost like a breakup. Like when, when the girl dumps you or you break up, that, that empty feeling. And it's really depressing to see him go, it really is. Oh, we made each other laugh, and we both smoke like fiends. We drink coffee together. I don't know how the people are going to take this, but you look really handsome. His his humor, his you know, just you know, him being here was it's it's it, look, it's like losing a friend, or a friend moves away. You feel like you grew up with this person and they're gone. Oh, well, just touch me. <laughs> what? Oh, let that be a snake. <laughs> Dave, after watching that, how creepy do you feel? Oh, 
I feel like the most dirty, unwashed human being that I've ever met. <laughs> hey, Rich, if Jeff had caught the rat, would you share the tub with him instead? Oh, no. I, listen, I... <laughs> no, he would not. I, how do I follow that, what you just showed? I, I'm speechless. Uh, oh. Rich, <laughs> Rich how, how did your family react when they saw the two of you in the bathtub? My 10-year-old called me during the show and says, Daddy, are you gay? <laughs> Sit down, Ellen. I have to talk. Uh, my, fa my father thought it was hilarious. Every time I would call my father after the show, uh, you know, he'd go right into Dave Mordell. Dad, uh, how funny Dave is. And then he saw the bath. The way they cut it, too, when they were just showing <laughs> Dave, you know, and then all of a sudden they pan in and we're both there. It was, the editing was great. It was, it, listen, you know, it is what it is. You're in a house 24 hours a day. You got to think of some things to do, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you know that in the bathtub scene, he thought I was naked? You were? People don't know that. Yeah. He thought I was naked and panicked when the water started coming out. So, well, <laughs> we get into the tub, we got our, our, our swim trunks on, and he hands this to the cameraman. And I'm like, I'm clinging to the wall because I don't want to slide into him. Because if I slide into him, then maybe I, well, you know, so. And, and the suds are going down, and I'm going, geez, let's wrap this up. Then he goes to stand up, and he had his underwear. It was a lot. I got to find a way to end these bits. <laughs> Well, Dave, you and Rich are, uh, well, you're America's new Ross and Rachel. <laughs> but <clears throat> once again, uh, it's time for you to part along with Sean, Terry, Rob, and Jeff. We need to say goodbye to you guys. We wish you the absolute best wherever your careers take you. Let's hear it for them, everybody. Thanks, Jay. Oh, that was nice. When we come back, it's time to get down to business and start eliminating comics and find out who will be the last comic standing. <laughs>